The city of New Bern has completed a new stormwater improvement project, an undertaking that earned the city recognition from Stormwater Solutions for their work on meeting population and regulatory demands as well as implementing cost-efficient technologies and practices. The city of New Bern invited local citizens and officials to tour the sites and gain knowledge about stormwater removal. What I'll do today is just give you a real quick rundown of how what how the project functions, uh, what what's going on in each location, and at the end of the day, what kind of benefit that's providing to uh, the communities down here as well as uh, New Bern as a whole. Uh, the intention of, of the tour. Uh, was basically to highlight for some of our local impacted residents the benefits of the project some of the and some of the things they can hopefully see uh, with the storms coming in the future how that will impact their properties also to give them a better understanding of what's going on out here on the site um, so they can you know they, they know not only that the water moving out away from their properties but see what's happening to that water before it's being discharged back to the river what the wetlands allows us to do now is capture move and capture a lot of that storm water that would impact low-lying areas in the past when we had a major storm event in the summertime that would drop three or four inches of rain in a short period of time we'd see areas of duffy field north hills drive places in, in those areas of new Bern and within that thousand acre watershed where the streets would flood uh, people's properties would flood um, you know basically what we call nuisance flooding where not really impacting the properties the, the homes as much but your yards are flooded you can't get out of the driveway streets are flooded have to shut down just because there's nowhere for that water to go what we've created here is somewhere for that water to go so now when you have similar rain events, we'll have the capability with the pump stations to transport that water out of the localized ditches and canals and move it to the wetland site for storage, treatment, ultimately discharge back to Jack Smith Creek. So you won't see those localized flooding events to the degree we did uh, historically in those low-lying areas. The first place we'll stop is at the end of East Rose Street. And what we have when we get there will be a large stormwater pump station. And the, the function of that pump station is to basically be an overflow outlet for stormwater flowing down the Duffy Field Canal. The first stormwater pump site is located at East Rose Street. The new pump became operational in spring 2013 and took roughly nine months to complete. Matt Montaigne is our stormwater administrator, runs our stormwater management program as well as is the head of our newly formed stormwater maintenance division. And this is Kristen Miguez with the North Carolina Ecosystem Enhancement Program, and the EEP was one of our major funding partners in the creation of the wetlands. Some of the aquatic weed on top um, can be problematic, and Matt Skies and part of their maintenance program is making sure that doesn't overrun. Um, what you'll have is you get too much of that, that floating vegetation, you overrun um, the area down here and create some serious issues with the pumps. So they've, uh, they've been able to, clean to do a good out. job and kind of keep that monitored. Now that we have the stormwater maintenance division in place, we have dedicated staff that can keep up with items just like that on, on a routine basis so they don't, you know, you're not hitting it once every three years, you're hitting it once every three months. The city's new stormwater maintenance division has divided the city into four zones and staff members will routinely visit those zones to address stormwater issues. We've had heavy rains lots of days. Did this thing kick on at any time or was it, did we not get enough at one time to cause that to happen? Uh, this pump station has not kicked on. Okay. With, the, with the elevation of the water, the elevation of the river, it was able to everything's handle. been able to flow out. Uh, the river's been out when we've had the rain, so this pump station has not kicked on. Okay. On the flip side, the one that Simmons Street on, that has kicked on several times. Okay. And basically, the water gets high enough, pumps kick on, we pump it into the wetlands, and it goes through the process. Okay. But this pump station has not. So it did what it was designed to do. When we, when we, when the water got high enough, it kicked on and it moved has. it out. Yep. Yep. The pumps, okay. the pumps on Simmons Street, and we'll see it when we get there, are all set on floats. So when it rains, the ditches flow to the wetlands, the pumps kick on automatically and then they'll kick off when the water goes down. Okay, thank you. One of the benefits of both the pump stations that we never thought about until we got them in place and actually cut them on is when they draw so much water to one spot, um, especially the one at, at Simmons Street, and we'll be able to demonstrate that one for you hopefully. Um, you've got so much water coming to one spot that it actually brings a lot of that floating trash, the cans, the bottles, things like that, a lot of that floating debris, it brings it all to one spot, right guys, and come right down here with the backhoes and equipment and very conveniently get that up. Get it back. So instead of spending a weekend or two weeks walking down the canal, picking it up, putting it in bags, uh, every time we cut the pumps on, we're getting large volumes of that coming down. Every time we do that, we remove that debris from the creeks.
The city's second stormwater improvement project is located on the north end of Simmons Street. Although these two sites are centrally located, their stormwater improvement impacts stretch across 1,000 acres of nearby residential and commercial property. To give you an idea of how fast it's pulling water from the canals to the station site, and you also be able to see through the discharge pipes how much water is going into the wetlands. Remember, like I said before, 21,000 gallons a minute, that's pretty much equivalent to a, a residential swimming pool every minute going through those pipes entering the wetland site. The stormwater maintenance staff turned on the pumps to show what it looks like to move thousands of gallons of stormwater into the wetland site. Our large hydraulically driven pumps uh, are capable of, of moving 21,000 gallons a minute. And the best uh, best analogy I can give for that is it's pretty much equivalent to a, a residential swimming pool. Every minute it's what will move through one of those pumps. At our East Rose Street Station we have one of those pumps. Here at the Simmons Street Station we have two of those pumps. So at Simmons Street, uh, and at the Simmons Street Station is actually what fills the wetlands. We have the capability of moving 42,000 gallons a minute into the wetland site. So that, that's a, the equivalent of two residential swimming pools every minute is what we can dump into the wetland site. So we can move a lot of water real quick. Who is with North Carolina State University, Chris Bass, uh, and his group is who actually designed the wetland site. And everything in there, uh, all the, the streams, the pools, the depths, everything has been specifically designed uh, to provide those, uh, those water capture and water quality benefits. And Chris is going to give us a little overview, Chris and Kristen, of uh, what's going on behind us within the wetland site. A big part of my job is to design and build these things all over North Carolina and uh, I build probably three or four of them every year. This is the largest one anywhere in North Carolina. It's the biggest one that we've ever designed, the biggest one that we've ever built and so it's right here in your town so you should be very happy and proud of that. We've got this thing which is called a stormwater wetland and immediately when people think of wetland they think of this uh, natural and sort of wild area but what he was pointing to is that what you actually see out there is a very highly engineered and designed water quality treatment plant and everything that we try to do is all about providing what we call ecosystem services and what ecosystem services can mean a lot of different things they can mean uh, flooding control flood benefits water quality benefits habitat benefits one of the things you'll notice out here is you can hear uh, wildlife. You'll see birds flying around. If you walk up close enough, you're going to see fish, turtles, uh, and all kinds of other things living in this wetland and, and taking advantage of it. But the bottom line and the reason why money was put forth towards this project is all about water quality, protecting Jack Smith Creek, and protecting the Noose River. This project was made possible by a partnership between the City of New Bern, the North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund, and NC State University. Most of the $2.7 million cost of the project was provided through a grant awarded to the city by the state's Clean Water Management Trust Fund. So before when I talked about um, this thing being a highly engineered device, um, that's a very important thing to remember when we talk about mosquitoes. because. We've been studying these things for a long time and building them, and we've actually had our students go out and take samples of mosquitoes in these different types of stormwater wetlands and wet ponds. And we've got a lot of research data to support some of the things that we decide. The first thing that we try to do is design these things to discourage mosquitoes from making them their homes. And because we know that mosquitoes are really important and they, they present a, a health problem to people, we want these things to be built in areas that are urban so that people can be around them, but we also want them to be safe. So the first thing that we do is we know that mosquitoes really love stagnant water. So one of the things that's really important about this thing is that the water is always moving. And you can see that. You can see how much water is flowing out of this wetland right now. And the reason it's always flowing are two things. One, because there's a slope. 
from the other end where we were standing before all the way down to this end, the whole wetland has a slight downhill slope to it. So that helps the water keep moving. The second thing is that those pumps come on almost every day. There's a small pump, the small electric pump that you saw down there, comes on every day and that helps the water circulate. And that keeps the water moving and prevents it from getting too stagnant. The second thing that we do is we try to create habitats inside these wetlands that are great for mosquito predators. The primary mosquito predators are fish, especially mosquito fish, frogs, birds, and dragonflies. And if you spend any amount of time standing here and you walk down there, you will see hordes and hordes of dragonflies. The biggest problem we had in the area that is being served by the wetlands project is there's nowhere for, nowhere for the stormwater to go. Um, basically, once the once the canals and ditches would fill up, there was nowhere to provide any storage. Most of the areas were built many decades ago before any of the state and local stormwater improvement laws were enacted. Uh, today, if you were to do similar development, you would have stormwater BMPs in place that would capture the stormwater and you know, provide storage so that's not impacting downstream areas. The BMP is a common stormwater term. It stands for best management practice. That's basically anything that's designed to capture and treat stormwater runoff. Stormwater retention ponds, which you commonly see around commercial sites, vegetated swells, constructed wetlands like we have behind us, those are all examples of BMPs. The thousand acre watershed that, that is served by the Jack Smith Creek wetlands, we have absolutely no BMPs to, to provide that capture and retention. So what, this, what, we, what we've done with the, wet, with the wetlands project is basically a retrofit of a BMP to provide stormwater capture and, and storage. So now that water had nowhere to go was filling the ditches up and impacting roads and impacting properties now can come to the wetlands and we have somewhere to store. Had a real good chance to test that out uh, probably about a week after we had the project finally complete and everything put online this past summer. Uh, we, ha we had a, a tropical storm hit the area, a lot of rainfall, and we saw very minimal if, if hardly any flooding in those low-lying areas. I'm just really, really happy that we were finally able to see this site come to fruition. It's been many, many years of work um, from all of the partners involved. You know, this is all um, a, a really large cooperative effort and you know we couldn't have done it without the city the city couldn't have done it without us you know NC State was such an integral partner in the project you know with the design and, and overseeing construction it's just it's, it's really nice to see it finally done. These sites are great when they're first built but all of them really need regular maintenance to be looking their best and providing the maximum benefits and so far the city of New Bern has been a fantastic partner for making this site as successful as it is. There's many cases where these wetlands take several years to look as good as this one looks already after one. And so the city's continued involvement and maintenance of this site will be very critical for its continued benefit. For more information about the Stormwater Improvement Project, contact Matt Montaigne at 252-639-7524.